discovered that they had assets that they had sold 100 or 200 or 300 times. Now, when those people come to collect, they can't all get their money, right? So it's the ultimate Ponzi scheme, but it's legal. It's legal in the city of London. That's why all countries and all major banks outsource their major crime to the city of London because it has the most lax regulatory environment of any jurisdiction in the world. I want to go to break in this next little six-minute segment, hopefully do five more in the next hour before we hand the baton to David Knight to get to Stephen, Dion, Bill, Brandon, and others that have questions or comments for Max Kaiser. MaxKaiser.com is the website. We're going to break in 30 seconds, but is it fair to say the globe itself is back in depression, Max? It never got out of depression. It's just you had a sugar high from a real estate bubble, but now that's popping again. Well, even mainstream media now says, okay, stuff's bad, uh, but we've always known it's never really gotten better unless you're part of the select chosen inside corporations and groups. But now they're all having to get armored redoubts and dig in and have escape plans. I mean, that doesn't sound like winning to me. We'll be back. I didn't really cover this properly today, but the writers did. And of course, I'm demonized in the report. Southern Poverty Law Center has come out and says, quote, conspiracy theories originating on the extreme right have invaded American political life, and that's not good for democracy, Southern Poverty Law Center. And they basically call for restricting free speech. SPLC calls parents against common core conspiracy terrorists. Uh, SPLC attacks the First Amendment. That's some of the key reports up on Infowars.com. So it's very, very important. Uh, Max Kaiser, I want to go to some phone calls right now, but whether it's people on the left or the right, speech is being restricted all over Europe right now. Uh, we're seeing it here. And I think that's part of this gulag casino economy you've warned about. Well, look what's going on in Portugal. They just had an election. The left won most of the votes, but the government, the ECB, the unelected bureaucrats of the Eurozone came in and said, we, we're not going to respect those results. So, That's right. That's mainstream news that it's a dictatorship, basically. I have it right here. Right. It's a dictatorship. So it's a, and they respond, they answer to the TPP and other global. I mean, what you talked about New World Order for years, uh, it, you know, <laughs> it's hard to argue that we're not now living in this corpocracy where these corporations have sovereignty over any state. We just saw in and, and let's listen to this. The president has banned the left from power. It, okay. Well, That's the London have. Guardian saying, doesn't say the government's become dictatorial and banned the new elected government that wants to leave the EU. They just say the left's been banned from power. Right. And for those listeners that will say, well, that's good because I'm a right-wing guy. Well, you know, next week it'll be the right wing is banned from power. It doesn't matter if you're left or right. Your power as, as an individual is being banned. Sure, they got right wing Germans trying to get out of the EU and they're trying to ban them right now. You're right. So it's it, the only body that has any power, you know, get back to my interest rate apartheid. If you can borrow unlimited amounts of money at 0% interest rate. No one can, can compete. You can buy assets, you can buy power, you can bribe people. And you create this 1% or one-tenth sure. of 1% 1 that becomes a global kleptocracy. You're absolutely dead on target. Dion in Illinois. Dion, you're on the air with Max Kaiser. Yeah, Max, uh, I want to know where is the United States going to go through hyperinflation like Venezuela? And don't the central banks favor inflation instead of deflation? That's a good well, question. Okay. Yeah, well, first of all, this inflation question is kind of interesting, particularly in the United States because, or, or here in Britain, they'll say that the inflation number might be at one, negative 1% 1 or at 0% or maybe 1%. But if you go into the grocery store, you'll notice that over the past couple of years, all the packaged goods, the prices have remained the same, but the servings inside those packaged goods are 10% less, 20% less, 30% less. There's a story out right now, you can do a search for it, where the company called SodaStream, they're selling the exact same product, the exact same size package, but it's 70% less product. <laughs> now, that's hyperinflation. That's hyperinflation right there. You're just paying 70% more for that product. So it's, it's what's it's called shrink inflation sure. or it's a stealthy inflation. Now, the question is, do, do, wouldn't they prefer inflation to pay their debts? And the answer is that look, in, viewed in that way, of course, it's better to be able to pay your debts off with ever-decreasing money the value of your money is constantly going down. Yes. 
but we live in a, in, in a world where these big banks and central banks, no matter how much money is being created or pumped up, the balance sheets of these big banks still are collapsing and they're still aggregating more debt. And that is what we call deflation. So if you want to get down to the nitty gritty here, we live in a, a world where we have deflation in a macro sense on the bank's balance sheets. That's what so I've always said. Wouldn't you call it like hyper stag inflation? You could do that, sure. Hyper stagflation is as good a term as any. I haven't said that for years because the real economy shrinks. You get paid less, but things cost more. The ultimate screw job. It's not supposedly able to happen in a real market, but this is a rig market. Back in 70 seconds, Max. Thank you, Dion. We'll talk to Bill and a few other callers. And then David Knight takes over. Stay with us. Let's move quick now through your calls with Bill, Brandon, Tobias, and a few others. Bill, you're on the air from California with Max Kaiser. Okay, are you there? Yes, My I am. My question is this. I have a, a theory that since our money is going to be worth absolutely nothing, and I keep getting these credit cards. Let me back it up a second. Uh, my wife and I are both retired, living on a fixed income. We have no hard assets in our names, so they can't come after us. Why not take all these bank credit cards I have, run them up, go out and buy all the food I want, the guns I want, whatever else, else I want. What are they going to do about it in the end? They can't take anything from me, right? Yes, but they're trying to change the laws to bring back debtor prisons. Max Kaiser? Well, the caller is is correct, I, but I would suggest that to make that effective, do an online campaign and get 10, 20, 30 million people to do it at the same time, then you win. Yeah, because they're getting all this free money and trying to pass it on as debt to us. I mean, I, I've never endorsed something like this because it kind of sounds immoral, but if it is fiat money from these crooks, why not screw them? I agree, but it, it, for an individual to do it, the odds are not in their favor. But if that individual started a campaign online and said, on this date in three months from now, uh, I want a million or 10 million people to do exactly what he described, then he would have an enormously powerful message being sent to the crooks. But then they could argue that you were organizing a fraud and maybe indict you for racketeering. I mean, I well, but, think... the, but, but Alex, you and I have had this conversation before. When you have a revolution, you're going to break a few eggshells. No, I get it. I get it. I, I understand it. I just fundamentally don't like not paying a debt off. But I get it. it's all fraud and fiat to begin with. You know, it's kind of like in uh, the fiction. The weapon that they use is debt, you see. I mean, you, you talk about gun rights because you're concerned about people with guns. I'm saying that the true evil is being perpetrated using debt. No, Therefore, I get it. It's weaponized debt. Have, it's weaponized it's debt. It's weaponized debt. That's what I'm saying. You need to load those debt bullets. All right, Bill. Interesting point. Very interesting point. Brandon in Florida, go ahead. Max, um, basically my question was, how are they going to sugarcoat uh, these negative interest rates to Americans? Um, like, how are they going to get that to be in our interest? You know, besides maybe saying that it's going to stimulate the economy. But if, you know, everyone found out, like you said, that they're going to be basically just taking money out of your account just for having it. I mean, how is that going to pass? Well, it's a good, good question. So, I mean, it opens up two or three points here. Remember, there was a confiscation done in 1933. They confiscated people's gold, and they put all that gold in something called Fort Knox. Yeah, they just digitally grab it out from your bank under these new executive orders okay. for economic emergencies. But so, so we know that, you know, so how do they sugarcoat it? I think there's two ways to sugarcoat it. Number one, as you point out, it'll be sold as a temporary measure that we need to finally break the back of this depression and get the economy back on feet. So it'll be presented like that. And it's a one-time bail-in of your bank account. If you don't do it, you'll lose everything. Right. In 1971, Nixon said it'll be a short-term measure for America to close the gold window and take off our obligations in the gold market. Of course, that has been with us now for over 40 years. The second way <coughs> is for there to be concerted propaganda. So they need a scapegoat. And obviously, Russia in RT is the scapegoat with John McCain uh, out there, you know, saying close down RT, et cetera. So they need a scapegoat. Russia is emerging as the scapegoat du jour. And so the politically and economically, they'll hit you from both ends. That's and right. We got to jump, Max. Excellent points as usual. Tobias right. in Oregon. Quick question. Final question for Max Kaiser. Yes, comment to Max. Our jury is, is a backbone of our entire system. And a little caveat to what he was saying about the stupidity of the public, basically, in the jury system is simply that uh, it's supposed to be a jury of our peers and a, a jury of our banking peers of good moral standing would have been able to convict that man. 
I, that's, that, that's true, uh, and, but uh, you know the jury process uh, system is highly corrupt as well. If you watch any of these cop shows, they bring in all kinds of consultants, and they're constantly figuring out ways to rig the jury. And before I go, Alex, let me point out that if you ever saw that film, Idiocracy, which points to how stupid America can get, it was set in the year 2015. Absolutely. It was supposed to be like 2200 and something, but it's actually happened. You're right, Max. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for the time.